Hey guys, I'm Clarissa, and I'm back with a video on Jennifer. Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez. Their relationship, history, them as separate people, and I don't know, just kind of going down like a nostalgic walk down the early 2000s. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Okay, all right. Jennifer Lynn Lopez was born July 24th, 1969, which makes her 52, which is unreal. She's gorgeous. She, I, th I swear, she looks better now than she did 20 years ago, and that makes her a Leo. So in 1991, she began to appear as a fly girl dancer on the show In Living Color, where she remained a regular until she decided to pursue an acting career in 1993. Her huge breakout role was in the 1997 movie Selena, which is a biopic on the singer Selena Quintanilla Perez. I hope I said that right. And this movie, I don't know, I think they did such a good job on it. And Jennifer looks so much like Selena, it's crazy. And I don't know if they used her real vocals, but I mean, she killed it at Selena and that was her huge breakout role. It also, she became the first Latina actress to earn $1 million for a movie role, which is huge. She also spent time with Selena's family and got to stay in Selena's childhood bedroom, which I think would be cool if you're playing someone. It's like kinda, I don't know, you're kinda like among their things, maybe like get a good feel of like who they are and maybe be kind of I don't know, you can put that into your craft as an actress. She also launched her music career in 1999 with her debut album, On The Six, which featured the singles, If You Had My Love and Waiting For Tonight. I remember the video for Waiting For Tonight. She has just sparkly face. I don't know if it's jewels or what. And like, they had the green strobe lights. I don't know, I remember like both songs vividly. <clears throat> in 2000, Jen and P Diddy like also known as Puff Daddy, her then boyfriend, attended the Grammys wearing a plunging green Versace silk chiffon dress. The dress generated worldwide attention and became the most popular search query in Google's history, leading to the creation of Google, Google Images, which is insane, but I remember that dress. I would be, if I had the body, I would be afraid to wear that dress. It's like one wrong move and your boob is going to like pop out like but she rocked it she looked gorgeous in that dress jennifer became the first woman to have a number one film and album simultaneously when in early 2001 the wedding planner and her sophomore album j-lo were released the same week j-lo ultimately became the best-selling release of her career including the singles love don't cost a thing and i'm real the latter reached number one in the u.s in 2001 j-lo J-Lo <laughs> J -Lo launched her first business venture, the clothing line J-Lo by Jennifer Lopez. And I remember, I think it had really, really short crop tops that were tight. Um, the really low, low rise pants. Um, I think velour track suits. I think those were some of the um, clothing items she had, but I remember that. In 2002, or 2002's Made in Manhattan became the highest grossing film of her career. She played an abused wife seeking revenge in a thriller Enough later on in 2002. An overworked Lopez suffered a nervous breakdown in 2001 while filming it. J-Lo released two albums in 2002. First was a remix album, J to the L-O, the remixes, featuring rappers Ja Rule, which I haven't heard about since um, the Fire Festival. I don't know if he's in jail or supposed to be in jail. I don't know. 50 Cent, Fat Joe, and P. Diddy. It became the first remix album in history to debut atop the US Billboard 200. Lopez's third studio album, This Is Me, Then, was released in late 2002. Despite having the highest opening sales of Lopez's career, the album charted at number six on the Billboard 200. The album's lead single, Jenny From The Block, peaked at number three, while its second single, All I Have, reached number one. In 2002, her other business venture um, was J-Lo opened Madre's, a Los Angeles restaurant serving Latin cuisine. And then 
and then later on she released her first fragrance, Glow by J Lo. And I remember, I remember that actually. It was this bottle and it had like a cool like necklace type thing. And I worked at a drugstore at that time, so I remember when we received it, you know, for the first time. I smelled it and was like, it smells really good. And I bought it with my awesome <laughs> employee discount. I remember that. I can like remember how how it smells, which is crazy when you think about it. Smell is such a, there's such a link between like memories and smell, like pure nostalgia, like sometimes smelling certain things. It became the top selling fragrance in the US and Lopez has since released over 18 fragrances as a part of a licensing deal with Cody. Lopez is considered a pop, pop culture icon, like obviously, and often described as a triple threat entertainer. She, like her film gross for like all the films she's done is $3.1 billion and she has sold 70 million records. I mean, that is pretty impressive to say the least. Um, I'm gonna go into her history of relationships prior to then. So, Lopez was in a nearly decade-long relationship with David Cruz, her high school boyfriend, until the mid-1990s. She later saved Cruz, you get lucky, you have a first love like that. She was married to Cuban waiter Ohani Noah from February 1997 to January 1998, which they didn't even make it a year. Um, in subsequent court cases, Noah was prevented from publishing a book about their marriage and from using private honeymoon footage of Lopez in a documentary. Okay, that would be my biggest fear. It's like, if you're an actor or whatever, and you haven't hit it big yet, but you're married to, like, you know, just an average person, and then once you strike it huge and you become, like, this superstar, I would be afraid of them, I don't know, telling my secrets, selling crazy, like, personal footage of me, pictures, I don't know, love letters. I couldn't imagine that is that is messed up that she had actually taken the court to like prevent him from doing any of this it sounds like a douchebag but that's just my thoughts and then lopez was in an on off relationship with record producer and rapper sean combs p diddy from 1999 to 2001. on the night of december 27 1999 lopez and combs were arrested and charged with criminal possession of a weapon and possession of stolen property after leaving the scene of a shooting at a Times Square nightclub. Charges against Lopez were dropped within an hour, while Combs was acquitted on all charges at a trial in early 2001. They broke up shortly thereafter. And then Lopez was married to Chris Judd, her former backup dancer, from September 2001 to June 2002. So it's like, that marriage lasted like nine months. I don't know why you couldn't have that one annulled, because it's like it didn't last a year it's like I don't know and I don't know what I gathered from JLo it's like she kind of she's not single long it's like once she's done with the relationship she kind of jumps like feet first into her next relationship and you know she doesn't wait long to become engaged or married so I mean she's married twice within let's see from February 97, that was the first marriage, and then um, September 2001, so that's not long at all. No shade, I'm just putting in my two cents. <clears throat> okay, and now we're going to go to Ben Affleck. Okay, Benjamin Beza Affleck Bolt was born August 15, 1972. He is also a Leo and he's 49 years old. Some of his accolades include two Oscars, three Golden Globe Awards, a Volpe Bee Cup, and a BAFTA. He began his career as a child when he starred in the PBS educational series, The Voyage of the Mimi, and The Second Voyage of the Mimi. And I remember this. I remember watching those shows because Ben Affleck as like a 13 year old, you can, he's totally, and I mean, this was before he was Ben Affleck the superstar. I was in sixth grade, that was like, I don't know, 97, 98, I don't know, before he was huge. But he looked, I don't know, you can tell it was him as a kid. And I remember that and it drove me crazy because when I saw like Armageddon, that's like, that dude was in that show we watched in science class. 
anyway, sidetracked, but, <laughs> and that show was produced for sixth grade science classes, so, yeah. 1993, he played the high school bully in the cult classic Dazed and Confused. He was in the movie Mallrats in 1995 and became friends with the filmmaker Kevin Smith. Smith wrote him a lead role in the movie Chasing Amy. The film was Ben's breakthrough. His next film would be his most successful, up to that point anyway, Good Will Hunting, which Affleck co-wrote and acted in, and it marked a turning point in his career. The screenplay originated in 1992 when Matt Damon, whom Ben knew since he was eight years old, and I think Matt is two years older than Ben, wrote a 40-page script for a playwriting class at Harvard University. See, I had no idea that Matt Damon went to Harvard, which, that's pretty cool. He asked Ben to act out the scenes of him in front of the class, and when Damon later moved into Affleck's LA apartment, they began working on the script in earnest. The film, which they wrote, the, wrote mainly during improv sessions, was set partly in their hometown of Cambridge, Massachusetts, and drew from their own experiences. They sold the screenplay to Castle Rock in 1994, when Affleck was just 22. During the development process, they received notes from industry figures including Rob Reiner and William Goldman. Following a lengthy dispute with Castle Rock about a suitable director, Affleck and Damon persuaded Miramax to purchase the screenplay. The two friends moved back to Boston for a year before the film finally went into production, and it wound up being directed by Gus Van Sant. And it co-starred Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Mew Driver, and Robin Williams. And Good Will Hunting is probably one of my favorite movies with Robin Williams. I love him in the more serious roles. And Ben and Matt, they both um, they say they owe Robin Williams so much because they wanted him for that part so bad. But with their budget, they couldn't afford his normal going rate salary. But once Robin Williams read the script, he was he was all for it. And he just, I think he asked for like, I don't know, a portion, a tiny portion of his usual salary. So they were so grateful that he decided to do that for them and made it, you know, more of the film that we know it to be. So Affleck and Damon eventually won both the Golden Globe and Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay. He remains the youngest writer at age 25 ever to win an Oscar for screenwriting which I didn't know that until looking this stuff up. So, the next movie, Armageddon, was released in 1998. <clears throat> it established Ben as a viable leading man for Hollywood studio films. Goodwill Hunting had not yet been released during the casting process, and after Ben's screen test, director Michael Bay dismissed him as a geek, which I can't see Ben like ever being like a geek, but... Yeah, producer Jerry Bruckheimer convinced him that Ben would be a star, but he was required to lose weight, become tanned, and get all his teeth capped before filming began. Armageddon was a box office success. Oh no, I remember that movie too. Liv Tyler, she's absolutely gorgeous. I don't know, I thought they were a cute couple. <laughs> so later in 1998, Ben had a supporting role as an arrogant English actor in the period romantic comedy Shakespeare in Love starring his then-girlfriend Gwyneth Paltrow. Affleck and Damon had an on-screen reunion in Kevin Smith's Dogma. Affleck starred opposite Sandra Bullock in Forces of Nature in 1999, Ranger Games in 2000 with Charlize Theron, which was the last film of 2000. Oh, never mind. Last film of 2000, Ben starred opposite his girlfriend Paltrow in a romantic comedy drama, or romantic drama, Bounce. And that one's a, that one's a really good movie, too. I don't know, I like that movie. If you have not seen it, because I don't think it's, you know, one of those that was really marketed, go watch it. It's pretty good. Affleck re reunited with director Michael Bay for the critically derided war drama Pearl Harbor in 2001. And I love Pearl Harbor. I remember I was 15 when it came out, and it's like, it had Ben Affleck, Josh Hartnett. I don't know. I love that movie. And then he was in Smith's Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back in 2001, and then The Sum of All Fears in 2002. Okay, just some more on Jennifer. She's widely celebrated for her Calipigian figure, which means she has a really nice butt, which she does. She has been credited with influencing a change in the mainstream female body image. 
and she really did. In the late 90s, early 2000s, being super thin and no curves was in. So she kind of changed it and it was really refreshing to see. They said, um, because she wasn't real thin, Lopez has broken the mold and allowed millions of women to feel good about their bodies. Suddenly it was okay for women to have hips, curves, and a big backside. Vandy Fair described her buttocks as, in and of themselves, a cultural icon. Details Magazine named Lopez the sexiest woman of the year in 1998, and she topped FHM's 100, sex 100 Sexiest Women in the World list twice. In 2011, she was named the most beautiful woman by People magazine. The following year, VH1 ranked her the fourth on their list of 100 sexiest artists, while Vibe magazine named her the most lustable celebrity of the past 20 years. In 2014, Lopez stated, There's this funny notion in America that you can't be a mom and be sexy. It's the craziest thing I've ever heard. The truth is, women can be sexy until the day they die. And that's true. It's like... There is kind of like a weird thing, like once you become a mom, like, you know, I don't know, like mom jeans, mom hair, like you can't be beautiful and be a mom. I don't know. It's just kind of weird. Lopez, Lopez has been a tabloid fixture and has admitted to having a less than perfect public image. The media has drawn comparisons between Lopez and actress Elizabeth Taylor due to her numerous failed relationships. That's pretty harsh, like... And Lopez has been dubbed a modern-day Liz Taylor by the media. Lynn Hirschberg of W compared her glamorous public persona to that of Taylor. Her style was described by Billboard's Lawrence Savage as, can as scantily clad. You know, I don't agree with all this that's said. It's like, really? And it's like, Elizabeth Taylor had way more relationships and marriages than J-Lo, so it's kind of stupid. She had received a bad reputation as being a demanding diva, something which she denies. I've always been fascinated by how much more well-behaved we have to be than men, adding that I got a moniker of being the diva, which I never felt I deserved, which I don't deserve because I've always been a hard worker, on time, doing what I'm supposed to do, and getting that label because you reach a certain amount of success. In 2003, The Observer remarked that Lopez was the woman immortalized in a million headlines as Hollywood's most demanding diva. Lopez must wonder what heinous crime she has committed to become the most vilified woman in modern day po modern po popular culture. Actor and filmmaker Ben Affleck come here, Gus, has observed the reason for her reputation as having something to do with racism and sexism. People were so fucking mean about her sexist racist ugly vicious shit was written about her in ways that if you wrote it now you would literally be fired for saying some of the things you said okay and now i'm gonna go through their love story whatever through i think vulture magazine because i want to see how they describe it so it's a hollywood love story 20 years in the making ben affleck and jennifer lopez rekindle benefer over a week in montana this may now that the stars have realigned and they both, they're both single at the same time, again, over less than two years from 2002 to 2004, their glamorous romance fueled early tabloid culture, set the standard for ship names, then fizzled out faster than it began. Within a year, they were married to Jennifer Garner and Mark Anthony, respectively, occupying celebrity news with other people. Now they're back to their old Y2K ways. Their 2021 reunion has inspired endless gossip, bless the sources, not to mention several essays devoted to our nearly two decade long cultural obsession with this perfectly odd couple. Sorry to everything Ben Affleck stands for, but no film could begin to encompass the daily drama and hilarity of his real life. Catch up on the Benefer with this timeless or this timeline of their relationship across the ages. Early 2002, Pop star Jennifer Lopez and Hollywood golden boy Ben Affleck meet on the set of Geely. I swear, I think it's Geely. Or G G G, whatever. Well, Lopez is married to her second husband, Chris Judd. Where else does Ben Affleck meet any of his girlfriends at this point? <laughs> I think it's Rhea, doesn't exist yet. And then April 2002. Affleck takes out a full-page ad in trade magazines to compliment J-Lo, which doesn't exactly say bestie vibes only. It has been nothing but an honor and a pleasure to work with you, it reads in part. I only wish I were lucky enough to be in all your movies, 
Signed, with love, respect, and gratitude, Ben Affleck. I didn't know he took out an ad to compliment her. I don't know. That's sweet. July twenty or yeah, July twenty fourth, two thousand two. Co stars and friends Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck are seen kissing and cuddling at a surprise birthday party for the Leo superstar. One of the first events marking the start of their relationship with the tabloids. July twenty sixth, two thousand two. J Lo files for divorce from husband number two after a month of separation. But that's a story for a prequel timeline. August 5th, 2002. People Magazine pays $75,000 for nine photos of J-Lo and Ben Affleck riding in a Bentley convertible, including one where they lip lock. To be a paparazzi, that has to be extremely, like, lucrative taking pictures. But, I mean, you have to be the first to take it and, like, I don't know, hound people. I can never do that. November 5th, 20, er, 2002. MTV's TRL premieres the music video for Jenny from the Block, a Y2K mood board starring Benifer, combining JLo's roots with her new movie star lifestyle. Ben famous, fam, famously leans over and kisses her butt while they sun on a yacht. Yes, this relationship explains his early 2000s tan, and nobody here can blame him, really. And then, yeah, because it was called the ass smooch <laughs> heard around the world. While well, kissing a booty, long rumored to be worth, worthy of a $27 million insurance policy, is on many of our bucket lists. In 2008, Affleck said the music video was his big regret of the relationship. See, the song is a mega bop and asserting JLo's street cred, but the video itself is about public's obsession with the couple, told through the literal lens of the paparazzi following them from lunch to the yacht to the gas station and home, hoping to catch intimate moments between Jenny from the block and Boston's hometown hero. But worshipping J-Lo's backside was a performance choice all his own. The video went early 2000s viral, so ultimately exposing themselves to comment on their overexposure backfired. And we're left with a grim yet sexy predictable or prediction of their hyper-public downfall that even J-Lo tried to get removed from MTV and VH1 in 2004. I didn't know she tried to get that removed engaged november 2002 by november they're engaged within months of her separation ben proposed to jen at his mother's house in boston it's just a blanket a quilt of rose petals all over the whole entire house lopez remembered in an abc exclusive interview with diane sawyer announcing their engagement so many candles and vases bouquets and my song glad was playing i walk in and i was like overwhelmed i wasn't expecting it and i was just like oh my god the ring, a pink diamond the size of Affleck's head, would go down in pop culture and monogamy history. It's true. He got her this pink diamond that I think it was reportedly worth $2.5 million. And I read that she kept the ring. She didn't give it back to him. So, I don't know. I mean, what would you do? If you're engaged to someone, especially they're engaged like a little over a year. It's like, and you don't get married, you break up, do you give the ring back or do you keep it? I don't know, like with ring etiquette, it's like, you know, if you're engaged, you usually give the ring back, but you know, if you're married, you keep the ring, but you guys let me know, like, do you keep the ring or do you give it back? March, 2003, Affleck denies any notion that he acted on his feelings before JLo and Judd separated. That is absolutely not true, he tells Vanity Fair. It goes against the fundamental code I believe in and live by. Being honest, doing things with which I can live rather than be ashamed of, doing esteemable things. The couple never officially says when they got together, but they do emphasize their innocence. Then July 17, 2003. Affleck reportedly pays a visit to a strip club in Vancouver where he was recording Paycheck. Hours after their intimate Dateline interview aired, the National Enquirer claimed he cheated on her with at least one woman and that the encounter might be on tape. Shortly after reports start to suggest Lopez had stopped wearing her $2.5 million ring. What they put out in the paper is not what happened, so it doesn't matter, she would tell W Magazine later that summer in an interview that came out in October. But watching that get so blown out of proportion, I was like, wow, this, is, wow, so this is where we're at. You can't walk into a place and hang out with a couple of friends without it turning into a national scandal. Ben himself denied cheating via a spokesperson and reportedly considered suing the Inquirer. 
Okay, the National Enquirer is like the bottom of the barrel, like for tabloids. Like, I wouldn't believe the majority of this shit in there, but I don't know. August 1st, 2003. Geely is dead on arrival, a box office and critical bomb with a worldwide gross of $7.7 million against a $75.6 million budget. Wow. So they lost basically $70 million on that movie. That's insane. I didn't know they put that much into it. And so are the vibes between the supposed it couple at the premiere, feeling suspicions that the romance is dying down. September 13, 2003, the day before the highly anticipated nuptials, America's version of a royal wedding before Kim Kardashian made it a regular occurrence. Benefer releases a joint statement via spokesperson postponing the wedding. Due to the excessive or yeah, excessive media attention surrounding our wedding, we have decided to postpone the date. We found ourselves seriously contemplating hiring three separate decoy brides at different locations. We realized that something was awry. We, be we began to feel that the spirit of what should have been the happiest day of our lives could be compromised. We felt that should have been a joyful and sacred day could be spoiled for us, our family, and our friends. I can imagine getting like decoy brides and stuff. And if you hear snoring or whatever, my dog Gus is literally right there. So I'm sorry. He's comfortable. I'm not going to like ask him to move. September 14th, 2003. A wedding for 400 in Santa Barbara, California does not happen in spite of reports. Can you imagine all the money they lost out on for like deposits and just, I mean, if you basically like hire a catering company and stuff, you still have to pay them like, and the venue and everything that I couldn't imagine how much they, I don't know, wasted pretty much. January 23rd, 2004, dumped, reads across the headline from the Chicago Tribune. I can't believe the Chicago Tribune reported on that. But Jennifer Lopez officially ends the discourse and her relationship in a statement to the Associated Press. I'm confirming the reports that Jennifer Lopez has ended her engagement to Ben Affleck. A rep states, at this difficult time, we ask that you respect her privacy. That did not happen. March 26, 2004, Jersey Girl, Benefer's second try at being a movie star couple, directed by Kevin Smith, the man who now claims he gave them the nickname Benefer, premieres. Though it's mostly remembered for crashing and burning as hard as the relationship had, I can't be the only 2000s kid straight up traumatized by Gertie Lopez dying during childbirth. And then they ask why us millennials aren't having babies. Yeah, that's how her character dies. Okay, June 5th, 2004, J.Lo marries Mark Anthony, whom she first dated back in 1999 after they collaborated on No Me Ames. We thought that this was where everything was supposed to lead, that we were meant to end up together, wrote Lopez in her 2014 book, True Love. All the heartache and pain in my recent breakup couldn't have been for nothing, could it? Maybe I had to go through the bad so I could end up with the person I was meant to be with all along. I didn't know she wrote a book. Um, I'd like to, I don't know, read it, but now that's like, you know, eight years old and things have like drastically changed, like... She should do an updated memoir. October 23rd, 2004. Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner make their first public appearance as Benefer. The sequel. <laughs> Benefer, the sequel at the World Series. They first met on the set of Pearl Harbor in 2000, but Affleck would later say they fell in love in 2002 on the set of Daredevil when they were both in other relationships. Again, that's a timeline for another day. It's like, so he fell in love with Jen Garner when he was with J-Lo? Like... And she was already married to, oh, who was she married to before? Was it Chad Lowe? I think that's Hilary Swank. I don't know. 2005 to 2018, an entire decade and some change passes by in a Dunkin' Donuts coffee buzz haze. Affleck and Garner marry in 2005, then welcome three kids. Violent in December of that year, Serafina in January of 2009, and Samuel in February 2012. Meanwhile, J-Lo and Mark Anthony have twins, Emmy and Maximilian, in 2008, and dramatically divorced three years later in 2011. Not to be outdone, Affleck and Garner go on to divorce in 2018, and Affleck rebounds with a massive dragon tattoo. That thing is ugly. Like, it's ugly. And I thought it was more of, like, a phoenix-type thing. I don't know. 
Around 2017, J-Lo briefly has a thing with Drake. I did not know that. Who himself boasts a cornucopia of famous exes that would derail this life, this timeline. But as J-Lo also told People in 2016 of her past relationship with Affleck, I think different time, different thing, who knows what could have happened, but there was a genuine love there. Interesting you would say that. March 9th, 2019, after dating for two years, former Yankee Alex Rodriguez, A-Rod, proposes to J-Lo with the kind of ring that has something to prove, because it does, and the world begins to anticipate another J-Lo-sized royal wedding. Yes, we have Meghan Markle now, but let's be honest, her wedding was modest compared to what J-Lo could cook up. March 8th, 2020, Deepwater stars Ben Affleck and Ana de Armas take a trip to her home country, Cuba. When they get back, they quarantine and perform for paparazzi together in Los Angeles, confirming their romance. December 2020, Lopez talks about having to postpone the wedding twice during the coronavirus pandemic on Access Hollywood. There's no rush, we're good, everything's cool and it'll happen when the time is right, she says without an ounce of fear. January 18th, 2021, the pandemic does not end, but Ben Anna does. Two days later, J-Rod attended the Biden-Harris inauguration, and any marital strife is drowned out by J-Lo's most patriotic, let's get loud yet. February 3rd, 2021, rumors that A-Rod is cheating with Southern Charm star Madison LaCroix begin to flood the tabloids like Miami during the rainy season. LaCroix tries to clarify by saying she and Rodriguez never met in person and have never been physical, never have had any kind of anything. March 12, 2021, sources tell Page Six that A-Rod and J-Lo have split up. March 14, 2021, except apparently sources need to mind their own goddamn business. All the reports are inaccurate, reads a joint statement from the couple to TMZ. We are working through some things. April 5, 2021, in an in-style cover honoring J-Lo with praise from her friends and collaborators, both Mark Anthony and Ben Affleck call her the hardest worker they know, while A-Rod isn't quoted. April 15, 2021. Okay, sources might have been onto something. We have realized we are better as friends and look forward to remaining so, the couple tell today in a joint statement. We will continue to work together and support each other on our shared business and projects. And then, Benefer back on block. April 30th, 2021. The public gets its first glimpse of Benefer in 17 years, as Affleck is seen going back and forth from her Los Angeles mansion. In that time, they've gotten hotter and richer, while the internet has gotten more adept at exposing celebrities. What could go wrong? For starters, the reunion comes with a big old disclaimer that they're f friends. They've never not been, a source tells page six. May 2nd, 2021. Ben and Jen spend the week in Montana, arriving back in LA on Saturday, May 8th, Sources tell anyone who would listen. It's natural between them and the chemistry is unreal. A J-Lo source sells E. Also confirming that he reached out to her. They picked up where they last left off and are enjoying each other's company r right now. Aren't we all? May 19, 2021. Jennifer is still very excited about how things are going. An insider tells people. Adding that Benefer are making plans to see each other and are in touch every day. Which Lopez returns to Miami and the cycle restarts. May 23rd, 2021. Per TMZ, Ben Affleck arrives in Miami wearing several layers too many and is later seen smoking a cigarette on the balcony on the same waterfront mansion as J-Lo. On his wrist appears to be the watch he wore in Jenny from the Block way back when. Is this an Easter egg just for us? Meanwhile, A-Rod is stepping into a new beginning according to a new Instagram story. I'm remaining patient and know that this new phase of my life is coming, he posts. It's a new, draw, new dawn, a new day, and Benefer is feeling good. May 24th, 2021. Ben and Jen both worked out at a Miami Beach gym on Monday, sharing a kiss in between separate private sessions per in touch. Apparently, no gym bros caught, caught it in the background of their mirror selfies. Rude. May 31st, 2021. After meeting up with another ex, Mark Anthony in Miami, J-Lo returned to Los Angeles and into the arms of Ben Affleck. The duo was photographed cuddling as they arrived at the Pendry Hotel in West Hollywood for dinner. Okay, now kiss. June 13, 2021. After weeks of world clinking, their spoons to their glasses, they kissed. And what happens at Nobu ends up in page six. Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck were photographed kissing again for the first time 
on Saturday at a function for her sister's 50th birthday. Sources say, in footage from the event, JLo's 13-year-old twins, Max and Emmy, could also be seen. According to People, spies, Ben and JLo held hands under the table as well. Ben and her kids seemed comfortable together, the source told People. The kids kept chatting with Ben. Ben seemed great. He was smiling and laughing. They ordered a lot of food to share. Ben had a Diet Coke. Just like 20 years ago, Benifer is going full speed. July 24th, 2021. Felice Cuplianos to the unaging Jennifer Lopez. She celebrated just like she spent her birthday in 2002 by kissing Ben Affleck. The 52-year-old posted a slideshow of photos to Instagram, including one where she and Affleck are kissing. Benifer is Instagram official, and it only took 19 years in the creation of the app. July 25th, 2021. And what would Benifer 2 be without an encore ass rub? Y'all went online and begged for the sequel, so don't be mad when they throw a little fan service. Ben Affleck was once again snapped giving JLo's ass a touch on a yacht in Monaco, not far from X A Rod, recreating a scene from the 2002 Jenny from the Block music video, inadvertently or not. The on the nose ass <laughs> grab seems to reveal a cog in the celebrity time machine. Shamelessly relying on nostalgia and boredom to stay relevant. If Benefer 2.0 is just an act, at least they're hitting their cues. July 26, 2021. JLo wears a Ben necklace in case it wasn't clear. I almost wish Affleck started wearing a Jen necklace just to confuse the tabloids. September 10, 2021. Affleck and JLo end their summer of love at Venice Film Festival, making waves in the water taxis, on a balcony, and finally on their first red carpet since reuniting. 19 years since they first appeared as a couple at the Made in Manhattan premiere. The couple arrived together for the premiere of Affleck's The Last Duel and assumed those familiar positions on the red carpet, gazing deeply at one another and sharing kisses like we're not watching. Cameras flashed, time folded in on itself. Lopez comes directly for Oscar Isaac's viral red carpet flirtation earlier this fest with intense eye contact and raw sexual magnitude of a nude lip this is a benefit acting it's better than any movie either of them have been in september 13th 2021 thanks to lopez and affleck making out with masks on is now met gala met gala behavior march 21st 2022 benefer reportedly become homeowners together things have been a, a little quiet on the benefer front while promoting her movie marry me JLo said she was trying not to say too much about her rekindled relationship, but rest assured that the couple is still going strong to the tune of a $50 million mansion in the Bel Air neighborhood of Los Angeles. That's insane. So can you imagine owning a $50 million mansion? April 8th, 2022. Lopez announces via her on the JLo newsletter that she has gotten engaged to Affleck. In a short video, she tearfully looks at the giant green ring on her finger. The clip was set to the sound of her whispering, you're perfect, in her song, Dear Ben, which was released for the in the first year of their relationship. So what we call a first, full circle moment, folks. And I guess she's never wrote a song for any of her other exes, only Ben. So yeah, they're now engaged. And I don't know, her ring, her new ring, the green diamond, um, is reportedly worth, I think, six and a half million um which is insane i think i have i'm gonna insert pictures in here but trying to get a quote on the green ring i think because green is her favorite color and it makes her happy so that's why she likes it Let's see and then did JLo keep Ben Affleck's engagement ring? Um, okay, it was too much to handle. It was the most magnificent thing. JLo's former publicist, Rob Shooter, revealed in an interview with Access Hollywood in 2011 that JLo never returned the ring to Ben. As far as I know, Jen has never returned the ring, he said. And then what's crazy is he spent $2.5 million on Jennifer Lopez's engagement ring. And then it was... um. A 6.1 carat pink Harry Winston sparkler. And then now, okay, here's the new ring. Green is my favorite color. It's also my lucky color, the Mary Me Star 52 told fans in a video shared 
via her on the JLo newsletter Tuesday. Obviously, it'll be my lucky color forever now. It means so much when somebody thinks about you and loves you and sees you. Lopez continued, and it was the most perfect moment. That's sweet. And then, just for shits and giggles, I googled how much did Jennifer Garner's ring cost. After her birthday party, he got down on one knee at her home in Brentwood, California, and presented her with a gorgeous engagement ring designed by jeweler Harry Winston. He likes Harry Winston. The dazzling 4.5 carat cushion cut sparkler is nothing short of a spectacular. The breathtaking ring reportedly cost Affleck a half a million dollars. Now, if you knew that, I mean, it was all over that he paid $2.5 million for J-Lo's ring. And then, I mean, not to be like bratty or anything, but don't you kind of feel like weird that he only paid like one-fifth of what he paid for J-Lo's ring on your ring? I don't know. I would feel weird, I guess. So, so far, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much Benefer through the years. And through the years, they've always said really kind things about one another, one another about, I don't know, in the press and stuff. Um, he said, she's a real thing. I keep in touch periodically with her and have a lot of respect for her. How awesome is it that she had her biggest hit movie at 50? That's fucking baller. And then on their very, very public relationship. We didn't try to have a public relationship. We just happened to be together at the birth of the tabloids and it was like, oh my God, it was just a lot of pressure. I think different time, different thing, and who knows what could have happened, but there was genuine love there. That's JLo. On their breakup, it felt like my heart had been torn out out of my chest. And when the realization that I wasn't going to have the fairy tale family I wanted really set in, well, that was when I really started to fall apart. How she thought Ben was the one. I really felt like I had found somebody great and he had found somebody great and we thought we could make it work. On his back tattoo. It's awful, it has so it has too many colors. His tattoos always had too many colors. On his looks, Ben is funny, he still looks pretty good too. On not having regrets. I would do it all over again, I think I really would. Even the relationship part, I just feel like everything is part of your story and your story and your journey is meant to be and helps you grow and you're willing to look at it and I'm willing to look. So, yeah, guys, that is the history of Benefer with a lot of details about them separately, too, and their other marriages and such. So I hope you guys like this little deep dive, kind of. And let me know what other pop culture deep dives you want me to do or conspiracy theories, true crime. I don't know. You let me know. So I hope everyone has a great day. And as always, don't be an asshole. Bye, guys.